Just one sleep left before the border war is renewed in Colombia. Plenty of basketball to talk about, but let's talk some football at the top, including the quarterback position for Missouri and Wake Forest coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And you know what? Let's start today with some football, even though, yes, the border war is tomorrow. Plenty of that coming up for you, I promise. But of course, I've talked about it all week, and I want to just remind all of you that, yes, there is a bowl game happening, even if it doesn't seem like it matters very much to Missouri at the moment. Well, it matters enough that apparently Brady Cook is going to start the football game. That's according to Dave Matter. In his chat yesterday at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, but it does sound like Sam Horn might get some snaps in that game, could get some action. According to Matter, the coaching staff has been impressed with the progress that Horn has made the last few weeks since actually getting some game action against New Mexico State, probably feeling a little bit more engaged, and who knows, just positive signs coming from Sam Horn anyway out of camp, but be really interesting again to see if Brady Cook can keep his hot streak going here at the end of the season with perhaps a little bit different look on offense, especially without a Dominic Lovett in the fold. And by the way, just in case, technically, yes, Dominic Lovett by rule could still come back to Missouri just because you put your name in the transfer portal. Well, we've seen guys come back before, of course. But I wouldn't expect that to happen by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, other than maybe Hiron White, Missouri has removed all of the players that have said they're entering the portal from their official roster on their website. So yeah, Dom's gone, folks. Let's just let's just accept it. And by the way, since I brought up Hiron White, he did enter the transfer portal as a grad transfer. He missed, of course, all of last year after being injured. Well, he's been injured for almost a year now, something like that. Missouri starter at right tackle the previous season, and his presence was certainly missed this past year, no doubt about it. So even though he wasn't on the team this past year, the expectation is White is going to apply for a medical red shirt. Unfortunately, if that happens, not going to be with the Tigers. But speaking of the quarterback position, let's get back there, in fact, Sam Hartman, I talked a little bit about him, the Demon, the Demon Deacons quarterback, the other day with massive amounts of experience. I questioned whether there'd be a lot of upside for him in playing this bowl game. Well, according to his coach, he's going to play. I, I will say there's still with a couple weeks to go to this ball game. You know, everybody expected Tyler Beatty to play in the bowl game for Missouri last season, including his parents, by the way, who made the trip to Fort Worth, certainly expecting to see their son play in that football game. So as we've seen before, anything can happen in these bowl games in terms of opt-outs. Timing does not always have to be perfect whatsoever. But I did want to pass along that Wake Forest head coach, for what it's worth, did say that he fully expects Sam Hartman to start in that bowl game. So it looks like both teams will be rolling out their usual starting quarterback. Now, perhaps depending a little bit on how the Tigers feel about Jabari Johnson, the Tacoma, Washington high school prospect, four-star player, going to sign here with Missouri in a couple weeks, maybe depending on how they feel about him coming in as a true freshman, providing Missouri quarterback depth. 
he might be a factor there, but I really think kind of regardless, I do expect Missouri to add a quarterback here in the transfer portal. Now, whether that's a guy who comes in and expects to start, I'm not totally sure, or a guy who comes in and expects to compete, I'm not 100% sure. I think it just depends on what Missouri can get, quite honestly. Now, Devin Leary from North Carolina State, some national writers have tabbed him as actually the number one available player in the transfer portal, certainly the number one quarterback. Well, even though he has ties to Eli Drinkwitz, Drinkwitz recruited him when he was at North Carolina State, I'm just not sure how likely that is considering how many options Devin Leary is going to really have. Now, as far as Keaton Slovis goes, the former Pittsburgh Panther, also USC Trojan before that, I've heard there were rumors early on that, ooh, Missouri might be all over him. But again, according to Dave Matter, it doesn't seem like the staff maybe loves him as much as the rumor mill initially speculated. And for my part, one thing I've noticed, I, I think once, you've, once you're doing the second time transfer as a quarterback, especially if you've had a lot of time to actually show what you can do on the field. To me, that's a pretty big red flag. And I'll throw JT Daniels into that pile as well. You may remember I wasn't the most bullish on Daniels this past season in the transfer portal because of his complete and utter lack of mobility. And well, just again, if you're transferring multiple times when you've had shots to start at multiple different Power 5 schools, that's a pretty big red flag for me. Now, if you transfer once, hey, that's okay. We've seen multiple different examples, guys like Kyler Murray, guys like Joe Burrow, who have transferred once, and it ended up working out great for them. Baker Mayfield, same deal. Well, how many are, uh, examples are there of guys doing it twice or three times? That's harder to pick out. I'm sure there are some examples, but none are exactly jumping to the front of my mind. And coming up, regardless of if Missouri wins on Saturday, I'm really expecting a competitive, thrilling basketball game, without a doubt. But also, I think both teams are going to look a little bit uncomfortable at times on Saturday for different reasons. So I want to explain what I mean in this next segment. But first, I want to tell you today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. And every new potential hire these days, I, I got to be honest, it really can feel like a high stakes wager. You want to be as close to 100% possible that you have the best qualified candidates available so you can make that perfect hire. Well, that's why you have LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. How about that? In fact, a lot of you already have LinkedIn profiles. All you have to do is add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your current profile to spread your word that you're looking to hire. So LinkedIn Jobs, once again, helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today from the big games to the biggest stories go beyond the box and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. That's Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get, of course, finer podcasts. And again, I just think this ball game, you look at how the season has played out for the Jayhawks and the Tigers so far. Well, obviously the Jayhawks are the more tested team so far. But for different reasons, I think both teams are going to look uncomfortable at different times because obviously, let's be real, the Jayhawks are far and away the best team that Missouri is going to have played so far 
on this young season. This will be Missouri's 10th game. Well, the first nine teams, Wichita State is the only thing even remarkably, even remotely, I should say, close to that. Whereas Kansas has played four power five, four, excuse me, has beaten four power five teams, including number 15 Duke, NC State, Wisconsin, and Seton Hall. They also lost to number seven Tennessee. Hey, go SEC. It just means more, baby. And that's quite a contrast, but at the same time, Missouri has actually played a true road game in Wichita that may have shown them what a a real atmosphere looks like. Whereas right now, the Jayhawks, having played obviously in front of a rowdy Allen Fieldhouse at home, hey, those are the good vibes kind of, that you get from your fans. That's the good kind of atmosphere. Well, this is going to be as hostile of an atmosphere on Saturday as you could possibly imagine. And I still contend that the projections here aren't really going to be able to account for that particular home court advantage. It's just not the same as it is in all the other games. And we really don't have any data from, we literally don't have any data from Missouri and Kansas in Mizzou arena for the last 10 years. So there's a, there's a factor to keep in mind. So right there alone, I think the Jayhawks are going to look a little bit uncomfortable at times, just dealing with this level of energy. Even Bill Self said it himself. He said, quote, so this is different. This is going right into the hornet's nest and getting able to experience that right off the bat. It will be different. In a perfect world, I would say it would be nice to kind of ease into these situations, but that's not the way the schedule is set up. And quite honestly, Missouri experienced this last year, if you'll remember. They hadn't played a true road game, nothing like, certainly nothing like Allen Fieldhouse for the return of that rivalry. I believe it was Trevin Brazil's first game, by the way. There's some trial by fire, but by the way, while we're on the subject, just in case you mentioned it, Trevin Brazil did blow out his ACL for Arkansas the other night on a non-contact injury. I know I know a lot of people are upset with Trevin for transferring to one of our rivals, but at the same time, I understand it. You know, Conzo Martin was fired. If he's going to start over, why not start over somewhere even maybe a little bit closer to home and all that stuff. But I, I just hated to see him get hurt. I wasn't exactly rooting for Trevin anymore, but you never want to see anybody get hurt like that. But regardless, let's get back to the Missouri-Kansas game, of course. And, you know, I, again, and the reason I think Missouri is going to be uncomfortable at times, well, the, again, this is just a big-time step up in competition. Kansas's wings are really long and athletic. I think that's going to bother Missouri a little bit at times. So I just think you're going to see both teams look a little bit uncomfortable as, you know, just the nerves of this game are naturally going to come in a little bit. Listen, a lot of these guys are not exactly growing up as Missouri fans, for instance, but listen, the fans the ones that are actually there tomorrow, well, they're going to set the tone. There's just there's just no way around it. And I really think that Missouri is going to need Isaiah Mosley tomorrow in this ball and in this ball game. They're going to need his ball handling, his playmaking, his bucket getting abilities. Because let's face it, Bill Self is going to have a good game plan tomorrow. He isn't going to give this basketball game to Missouri. He's got nine games of film that he can work with now the question is does Bill Self have enough ball handling and depth to handle what's going to be a fast-paced game in a hostile arena against a team that's shown the ability at least against weaker competition to certainly put the ball in the basket no doubt about that but again I think Missouri if they have an advantage here and to me the big the obvious advantage on paper at least is ball handling and I think Isaiah Mosley has got to be a big part of that tomorrow or else I I just don't think Missouri is probably going to have enough to take it down. I've never considered Kansas to be a slow playing basketball team by any stretch of the imagination and I don't think this year's squad is either but considering Missouri is fourth in adjusted tempo nationally and also eighth nationally in average possession length Long story short, that means they play quite fast, at least so far. 
So the question is, can Kansas slow Missouri's offense down tempo-wise? Can they bog them down, get them out of the fast break, make them play more half-court and work that shot clock a bit more? Again, I, I just think Missouri has too many ball handlers for Kansas to pull that off. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I see this playing out. Now, of course, then it's going to come down a lot to who makes shots, can Missouri guard the three-point line in particular? I think I would put Des Moines Hodge on Grady Dick, the six foot eight true freshman shooter for Kansas. Where's number four? I think I would just put Hodge, who may be Missouri's best perimeter defender, just put Dick on him and tell him just to worry about taking him out. Never help. Because I think if Missouri can avoid that guy in particular getting off it gives them such a better chance to win I'm not even really that worried about their leading scorer Jalen Wilson getting points I mean somebody's going to score on that team and and if he scores if he gets 25 points so be it because to me I just think if Dick gets hot then it just opens it up for everybody else it just opens up the entire court whereas sometimes when I've watched Kansas this year I think their offense tends to get a little bit too Jalen Wilson-centric and sometimes bogged down. Maybe some Kansas fans would disagree with me on that. Y'all have seen him more than I have. That's just my opinion on a short bit of watching. And I mentioned Isaiah Mosley. I think Missouri will need a productive game for him to win. That's one of my predictions. But also, I think... There's a real chance that there's an X factor on the Missouri roster in this game. It'll be really interesting to see what Aiden Shaw does with his early minutes tomorrow in this basketball game. But you know what? First, I want to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is, of course, your number one sports, your your number one source, excuse me, for all things wagering. And you know what? As of this recording, at about one o'clock central. No line yet, but I expect Kansas going to open up favored by three and a half, perhaps four points. I just think you look at the Ken Palm projections, Kansas by three is their projection. I think you'll see that bumped up a little bit. Kansas being more of a public squad, if you will, being the defending national champions. They're going to get more of the public interest than Missouri. So do I think you should take Missouri? Yeah. Yeah, I do. What the heck? Let's put 20 bucks on it because, again, I just don't think that the projections can totally factor in the Mizzou Arena component tomorrow. That's I think that's objectively true, by the way. I don't even have to be a homer to make that pick. But, hey, if you want to go against me, feel free, KU fans. Do it. I dare you. But when you do, you got to do it at Bet Online, where the game starts. <laughs> I mentioned there aren't exactly a lot of native Missourians on this Tiger roster who maybe fully understand the Missouri-Kansas rivalry. That's for darn sure. But ironically, the one guy who might is Aiden Shaw. And I say ironically because he's from Kansas. He went to Blue Valley High School, still, still well Kansas. Well, he's probably got a pretty good idea being from that area at least. Hey, Kansas and Missouri, yes, they hate each other. And I just think it's going to be interesting to see what that young man gives us off the bench tomorrow because I'm sure he's going to have some energy, no doubt about it, probably some nervous energy, but can he summon that type of energy for the positive or the negative? Maybe asking a lot for any true freshman. But So I would just tell Aiden Shaw, if I were the coach, Hustle, play hard, and hit the boards, but you know what? Play within yourself defensively. That would be my biggest note for him. I just don't want to see Aiden Shaw lunging at every steal and every block shot and giving up you know, easy baskets on the back end or picking up fouls, something like that. But if he can give us a lot of energy, if he can rebound the way I think that he's capable of, at least with hustles, hustle and athleticism and maybe throw down a couple big alley-oops, that could really be a big energy boost coming off the bench for Missouri. So Aiden is definitely a guy 
I'm going to be interested seeing what he does tomorrow, certainly the rest of his career, hopefully here at Missouri, because I really like him as a player, getting really good vibes from him so far. And finally, I did say I'm expecting a really competitive ball game tomorrow. Well, obviously, as I said before, the Ken Palm projections agree with me. Well, currently over at KP, Missouri, for the rest of this season, a couple notable games here. They're projected to beat South Carolina by 13 at home this season and also lose in Knoxville to the Volunteers by 14. But other than that, other than those two games, every remaining game is a predicted single-digit affair. So you know what? Get used to some highly competitive, nerve-wracking ball games and hold on to your butts. The good news is, so far, this Missouri team has been really, really fun to watch. So if you like competitive basketball, get ready for hopefully about four months of goodness. And thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen today. And for your next listen, I suggest Locked On Sports Today, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on Odyssey, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mizzou.